In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get rid of any unwanted background noise that you may have in your recordings. And we're gonna be using Edison within FL Studio. What's up my producer friends, it's David with anothermonsterproductions.com. So Edison is a pretty amazing audio editing and recording tool that comes with FL Studio and it comes with the producer edition onward. So as long as you have a license to FL Studio and you have at least the producer edition, you'll be able to do everything in the tutorial. And without further ado, let's get straight into it. All right, so the first thing that I wanna do is go into my mixer in FL Studio. And basically we're gonna choose any one of these slots. It really doesn't matter. Just choose one uh, and then pick a random slot and you can load up Edison. And then we'll go to our folder where your recording is that you wanna clean up, that you wanna get rid of the noise. And you can just grab that recording and drag it directly into Edison like that. Now we can also just drag a recording directly into the playlist if we wanted to. And then if we double click on it, it'll bring in our channel settings. And then down here at the bottom, we can right click on this waveform and go edit an audio editor, which will also just automatically load it directly in Edison. And then of course we could do this by loading the sample within our browser as well within FL Studio. All right, so once we have our recording loaded into Edison, we can take a listen to the recording just by hitting the play button right here in Edison. And you can probably hear right away that we have this sort of background noise. So this was actually a recording of me hitting a bag of ice with a knife in my freezer. So we have the background noise of my freezer, which is pretty loud. And that's what I want to try and get rid of in this clip. So what I'm going to do is highlight just this area where it's only background noise. And let's take a listen. All right, cool. So it's just the background noise, no other sound. And what I'm going to do is go up here to this toothbrush looking tab. This is our cleanup slash denoise tab. And what I'm going to do is just right click it. So I right clicked it and this little text should pop up which says noise profile acquired. And so once you see that text, you can go ahead and go back down here, left click to drag this red section all the way across. Basically this red section is highlighting the area within Edison. So if we didn't want to highlight the whole clip, we could potentially get rid of some of that like this. For our case, I'm just gonna leave it all the way across the whole clip. So now I'm gonna go back up here to my toothbrush tool and I'm gonna left click. So this cleanup denoise box should pop up and in just a little bit, I'm gonna go over what the threshold and the amount and some of these other options do. But what I found is this thing actually does a pretty good job of the default settings being exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna assume that's the case and I'm gonna go ahead and hit accept. And now you instantly see all that noise just went down. Now there should be no extra background noise. Let's take a listen. Pretty cool. So now I can drag this sample directly back into my playlist by clicking this button here. And we're gonna drag it in. And now we can zoom in here and take a look at the difference. So this is our original recording. We, we have all this background noise there. And this is our cleaned up, denoised recording. And you can see it's all cleaned up there. It's really nice. So you may have actually been able to hear that when I played the recording that had the cleaned up, denoised audio, we actually lost some of that low mid frequency content that was in the original sample. So the sample sounded a little bit thinner, definitely not quite as much oomph in it as the original was. Now for this particular recording, this is just fully percussion and I'm not necessarily too worried about that. But if this was a recording where I was really worried about that, we do have some options to mess with, which we can tweak these settings a little bit and hopefully find the optimal point for retaining that original frequency content while getting rid of the background noise. Now, one thing to kind of keep in mind is that the louder the background noise is and the more frequencies it takes up, the more of that frequency content that we don't necessarily want to lose is gonna get taken away from the entire recording. So obviously you're gonna to wanna to try and keep your noise floor as low as possible when doing any recordings. But if we do find ourselves in a situation where we feel like we're losing too much of that frequency content, we can find kind of a happy medium by messing with the threshold and the amount. So the amount controls the denoiser amount. And if I bring this all the way to the left, you can see up here, this is 3.0, which is basically the least amount of denoising that this particular denoiser does. And then I can bring it all the way to the right, which is 40, which is the most denoising possible. Now the threshold works in a similar way. This is the denoise threshold. So all the way to the left is negative six dBs. 
and then all the way to the right is positive 6 dBs, and then the middle is the default. Now this also gives us an option to listen to the output noise only. This is definitely useful uh, when we're messing with these because we can listen to exactly what is getting taken out. So for example, let's take a listen. So when I've got the amount all the way up, you can really hear a lot of that stuff's getting taken out. Uh, maybe if I go to about, I don't know, let's try like 10. So you can actually hear a lot less of that low mid is being taken out of the actual hit of the ice. That's a good thing, but we're also, you know, potentially leaving a little bit more of that noise in. So if I can unclick that and then preview, So we've taken out a good amount of the background noise, uh, but not quite all of it in the same way. So this is really going to depend on what you personally want to achieve as to how much you want to play with the threshold and the amount, but they definitely are very useful. So that's all I've got for today, and I'll see you in the next video.